So today's episode is about setbacks and how to adjust and keep moving forward. If you noticed, I haven't published a podcast episode in about a week, and that's because I just got myself a new injury. Oh, I always used to pride myself that you know, I've never injured myself in a gym before. I've only messed myself up during sports or moving equipment and doing stuff like that. But lo and behold, I got my first real injury in a gym from doing something very stupid. And immediately with my mindset, it doesn't matter, take care of the problem and keep moving forward and adjust. I know this must hit home for a lot of you over 40 crowd because we're just chock full of injuries. And if you're interested in hearing my story and my plan, then stay tuned. How's it going? This is Brad Williams with Over 40 Fitness Hacks, the podcast where I help you being over 40 to fight the aging process without giving up your social life. I've been a personal trainer and gym owner for over 14 years, and I specialize in helping the over 40 crowd get to their goal. If you need a little bit of guidance, check out my show notes. I have a link to schedule a free 15-minute Zoom call, and you can ask all the questions you want. But enough of that. Let's get on with the episode. So let me just begin with a quick version of the story that just happened to me in my gym. I had just finished all my warm-ups, and I was getting ready to do upper body day. I got on the incline bench to do some incline press. So I'm always trying out new and different techniques, and I really wanted to start emphasizing on every different machine I've been using on how to get that extra little isometric squeeze, mind-body control, and whatnot. And actually, I was going to be using the cable machine because it was a lot safer to do a, a really controlled and angled press across my body to try to really feel the upper pec being utilized. And still using my time under tension, using the lower weight, but it was being used at the time. So I went to the incline bench, grabbed some really light 10 pound dumbbells, performed the movement, coming up, squeezing to the center, and then going for the other arm. And it just wasn't enough. And right there, I should have known if you can't feel something, even with the lightest weight, with your mind body control and your isometric squeeze, then that angle and that exercise is probably not going to work because I should have felt it. I know I would feel it on a cable machine angled, crossing my body doing the same motion with the tiniest amount of weight. So I went for a heavier weight, 40 pound weights, went up with my strong arm, my right arm, coming up to the top, going to center, getting that extra squeeze, bringing it back and knowing that, okay, don't go past maybe the inch or inch and a half mark. Went up for my left side, same thing, did a little faster this time because I was already comfortable with the movement on my right. Went an inch and immediately after that inch, it just kept going. I'm still holding my other dumbbell down by my side with my right arm. So there's nothing to catch this left arm. And then your natural reaction is just to fight it, save it. But by then I'm already 12 inches across and it took me over to the side. When you look back at it, you wish, okay, I should have just dumped it. But that's not what your subconscious does. Your initial reaction is you got to slow this down. You don't want to just chuck this weight in this guy's gym. And as soon as I did that, I immediately started hearing the cracking of all my tendons and ligaments on the backside of my left shoulder and then pain, numbness. I actually rotated my body to the side it was falling before actually letting go of this damn weight. And finally, it was so much after even I rotated my body, chucked the weight and immediately went to my arm, numb, couldn't feel anything. Already knew I messed something up from all the sounds and the cracking. So my first reaction is, uh, sit forward, hang my arm and pull gently, just in case I unsocketed the humerus. And after about five seconds, I let go and it felt like a lot of the feeling came back. So I think I actually dislocated a little bit. And then the shock set in, the sick feeling, the feeling of fainting. So I sat there for a second, put my weights away. Thank God my brother was in the gym already too. So I just went over and sat by him. And within 10 minutes, I felt good enough to drive. And there we go. So I'm sitting here today. I've already taken an MRI. It already feels a lot better. The next day, I already talked to my physical therapist on Zoom, and he gave me all the different motions to do. And he definitely doesn't think I tore a rotator cuff. It's just the tendons in the back of your shoulder just got stretched, just like rolling an ankle. The only scare would be if your humerus popped out a little bit, did you get a slight labrum tear? And uh, from what my therapist said with you know, with all the athletes he's worked with and, and a lot of professional sports organizations as well, that nowadays, even with a labrum tear, 
they still like rehabbing it because they can strengthen it you know, back to 110% versus surgery getting you back to 95 to 100%. So that made me happy. Who knows? I'll do another episode with the exact results and how I'm doing. But for me being a personal trainer, I'm pride in myself that none of this has ever happened to me. Just one moment of stupidity and also being over 40, a recipe for disaster. It can happen to any of us. So what today's episode is about is moving forward. What do you do? You know, one of the biggest things I always hated when I got clients and something happened to them, they go to their, their doctors and the first thing you tell them is like, okay, you need to lay off the gym. You need to let you know, whatever ailment they had, ankles, knees, hamstring, quad, anything. And they tell them you need to take you know, two weeks off. Then we'll start our therapy, do nothing else. And then my mind is, okay, you hurt your shoulder. What's wrong with your legs? Mind you, there's always those special cases. If your doctor said, you, know, you can't do anything because we can't get your body temp up, your blood pressure up because they put you on medication, you will always do what your doctor says, but always question them because even with my dad and all my other doctors I've had, I really push that question to them. I'm the personal trainer telling them this story. Why do you guys keep saying that when there's nothing wrong with the rest of their body? Why can't they keep working out? They're like, well, we just want them to rest. No, that's not what you told them. You told them just to stop doing everything, but not because you just want them to rest. What if they don't want to rest? They want to keep pumping. We can't have setbacks. It takes too long to get back to where we want to be. So when I pressure my doctors like that, as well as my dad, then they go, well, okay. I guess I don't see any problem with doing that as long as you're not touching the injured part and you're easing back into it and go with what you, how you feel. Okay, why don't you say that at the beginning and instead of scaring all my clients and they need to take four months off for the gym. So definitely not doing that myself. What am I going to do? So I just finished my six month weight loss challenge, lost all this weight, partied up that weekend, set me back a little bit just to have my shoulder go out. And now I just lost upper body day and I've climbed up a few pounds. That's okay. So immediately my new goal is if you can only work out legs, then we're going back to three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it's basically leg, leg, leg. One day could be hamstring focus. The other day, a little quad focus. The other day, a little glute focus. Calves on all of them. And just do every type of exercise you can imagine. Just to mix it up. Pilates type stuff, balancing on one leg. I do a lot of single leg squats, lunges to the side. There's a million different leg exercises. And that's my focus is to get all of them. Because you got three days worth to fill in you know, the half hour that I spend at the gym. I'm still using my creatine and HMB, but I pretty much cut those in half because I don't need as much anymore. And the extra weight I just put on because of this whole fiasco, partying up after you know my weight loss challenge, I, I was increased back to 1,800, about to go to 2,000 calories. I've sunk in my diet right back down to 1,500 to get some rapid weight loss, to get back down to uh, you know 196 to 198. And some of the lack of exercise I can actually get on my days off on Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to one single meal for 1,500 calories or close to it to give my body even more time under that fasting protocol. I started all this last week and I've already climbed back to 201 and I'm watching my upper body that's gonna slowly waste away and that's okay. You know, you gotta deal with your injury. Let's get these legs phenomenal, keep our calories going and move on. You know, for someone who had an injury on the lower body, so same protocols. So you can do all sorts of upper body exercises, biceps, triceps, and even for people who had ankle injuries, you can still do like leg extension, leg curl, the machines where your ankle is a little mobilized. Although that's not the most optimal to train if you talk to any physical therapist, because that is now an open chain network, not closed where your feet are planted on the ground. But like I said, it's just a short duration. You're just using what you got at the moment to keep some lean muscle tissue either sustained or hopefully gaining some. But that's all I wanted to say for this episode is Stuff happens, you gotta keep pushing forward, at least for maintenance, because the more time off you take, age is 100% against you. It'll start ripping the muscle right off your body. You start getting more tired, you start getting more depressed. And I've been down that road before, and I know it's even harder now, and it's not gonna happen this time. So, always think of what you're doing before you do something. No, this was not just a slip and trip and fall for me. This was planned and I played with it and I knew ooh, this wasn't going to be the greatest. I should have had a free hand to catch my left arm going over, but just a lapse in judgment, 
whatever, it happened. And it only makes me a better trainer. So hopefully any injured people listening to this podcast, because of the title I'm going to put on it, don't worry. Even if this is an injury that's going to take a little longer, that's okay. Eventually, you're going to be building that injured part up back the right way and hopefully stronger than ever because you're going to be using tiny weights, doing physical therapy, and hopefully you're matching it to the other side. And take it for someone who's been through two back surgeries over the last six to eight years and came back every time. This is nothing new to me. You have time. Keep the weights low. Keep your time under tension going. And I wish you all the best. So with that, I think I'll end the episode. Uh, Like I mentioned, I'll probably do another uh, podcast episode where I actually get my MRI results, what I need to do, and go from there. All right. As always, I have a link in the show notes if anyone would like to do a free 15-minute Zoom consultation to see if I just can't point you in the right direction with any problems you're having. Other than that, thank you for listening, and I'll keep pumping these out as I go.